I'm making a Minecraft clone. I want to make it run fast. But where do we actually begin with making a Minecraft clone? Well, we have to start with a block. A block is made out of six faces. Each face of two triangles, where each vertex of the triangle is going counterclockwise. But Minecraft is made out of more than just one block. So let's add some more. But we can't just add more without taking into consideration the surrounding blocks. When we replace this stone block with a glass block, we can see all the extra faces being rendered inside. This is bad for performance. When you're building a mesh for a chunk, each time you go through a block, build a bitmap of the adjacent block surrounding it. If the adjacent block is the same type, or is opaque, then that means you don't have to add the face that is touching that block. This saves the GPU from having to render all the faces that you wouldn't see anyway. Not only do we want to minimize the amount of data sent to the GPU, but we also want to minimize the amount of draw calls. That's why Minecraft organizes blocks into chunks of 16x16x16 16 by 16 by 16 blocks. In general, the larger the chunk, the fewer draw calls are needed to render the scene. But the longer it takes for each mesh to be built. I've found that 32x32x32 32 by 32 by 32 blocks per chunk gave me more performance than 16 cubed. We can store blocks in a three-dimensional array. However, in Java, each reference to an object is about 4 bytes. This can add up pretty quickly, and when you run out of memory, the garbage collector will start to panic, or the program will crash. So naturally, storing objects in a three-dimensional array is bad for performance. We can improve things by storing blocks in a flat, one-dimensional byte array, where each byte corresponds to a block ID. We can improve things even further by separating a chunk into wide layers, and if the blocks are all the same in the same layer, then just replace it with a single reference. This means for each layer, instead of taking a kilobyte of memory to store each block, it only takes a single block, so four bytes. In the cases where a chunk is made out of a single block type, we can reduce it from 64 bytes to just four again, because we don't need to store each individual layer. The downside with storing blocks as a byte array means that you can only store 256 blocks. If you exceed the amount of block IDs that can be stored in a byte, we can always upgrade the chunk data so that it stores blocks as shorts instead of bytes. I haven't implemented this in my engine yet as I don't have that many blocks, but it would be something I implement in the future. When we apply these memory savings, my flat world demo reduces from 1.3 gigabytes of RAM into mere 200 megabytes of RAM. When we make these memory savings, we're able to render a much larger scene. What you see in the background is a mountain that is 768 blocks tall, with the same render distance as Minecraft Bedrock Edition. In total, this scene takes 2.5 gigabytes of VRAM and only 600 megabytes of RAM. There's one more step needed to render large scenes, however. Remember that the fewer draw calls sent to the GPU, the better for performance. And not all chunks will be visible to the camera at a single time, so we can apply frustum culling. Frustum culling checks whether the bounding box of the chunk is within the camera's point of view, and if it is, then try to render it. Otherwise, the chunk doesn't need to be rendered in this frame. Frustum culling is expensive, however, so it's better to do a broad search first by adding chunks to a set of regions, where each region is 16 by 16 by 16 chunks. This means that if the region is not in the point of view, you can skip the bounding checks for all the chunks within. As a result, 4096 checks are skipped entirely for each region. There's one more optimization that we can apply, and that is by pre-computing the visibility of adjacent chunks, and then checking each chunk in a breadth-first search algorithm from the camera's point of view. This way, we can hide chunks that are in the camera's view, but are blocked by other chunks. This is known as a collusion culling. I haven't implemented this in my engine yet, but it's a powerful optimization that can be done in the future. As of now, I have made a very basic Minecraft clone, but there are two more things to implement that will be costly in terms of performance. The first being lighting, and second, block states. Luckily, due to the memory optimizations we performed earlier, both of these things will be much easier to implement. We can expect most of the world to be covered in darkness, or have a full skylighting level. As a result, lighting can be optimized in memory, 
the same techniques used as blocks very well. The biggest problem will be the calculation of lighting, which is a whole other beast. As for block states, which are required for directional blocks, such as stairs and torches, we can expect most natural blocks in the world to not have a block state at all. So, again, this can be optimized in memory very well, needing only a small object that defines that there are no block states within the chunk, as opposed to an interray needed to express all possible block states for every single block in the chunk. This concludes just about everything I've done so far for this project. There were further optimizations such as multi-threading, but that's not uniquely exclusive to a voxel-type game like this. But if you are interested in how I implemented multi-threading in this, then do let me know in the comments. I started this project because some time after Minecraft left beta, it lost its charm for me, although I'm not really sure as to why. I do plan on eventually making this into a game of its own right, and not just a Minecraft clone. If you have any ideas on what Minecraft could have done differently, as far as its game design goes, then do tell me because I want to hear about it. Next video, I plan on tackling world generation and rendering water. If you want to tag along with me on this journey, then stay tuned. Take care, and see you next time.